So last time we started off uh, talking, or excuse me, last time we finished off with um, talking about cellular systems. So just to remind ourselves a little bit of, uh, of uh, what we were talking about, let's do a quick example involving GSM. So we saw in cellular systems, um, the motivation for using cellular is so that we can read frequencies over a large area of space. In GSM, our specific example, um, our specific example of a voice cellular network, uh, what we saw was that uh, in GSM 900, we basically have 100 megahertz Split up into two bands of 25 megahertz each. It's uh, frequency division duplexing, which means what? Anybody know what frequency division duplexing means? Yes. One side of frequency is dropping, one side for doubling. Exactly. So we have two bands of 25 megahertz each. Uh, with a gap in between. So there's 100 megahertz available, uh, but there's a gap in between these two bands we saw. Uh, so what we do is we pick um, uh, we pick one channel in the uplink, and that's the lower band of, uh, of 25 megahertz, and we, we pick an equivalent band in the, in the downlink, and that's the upper band. So what we saw with GSM was that it's both FDMA and TDMA. The FDMA side is that that 25 megahertz, uh, the 25 megahertz uplink and downlink are both divided into chunks of 200 kilohertz. The TDMA, we have that uh, within each channel of 200 kilohertz, um, eight users share um, share each of these uh, each of these uh, channels with TDMA. So let's ask the question if, so for example, if we have um, uh, frequency reuse factor of seven and GSM 900, How many calls per cell? So just to remind you, the reuse factor, that's you break it up, you the whole thing with the uh, how many breaking up into different areas? Correct. So let's remind ourselves what that means. So the reuse factor of seven, basically that means every seven cells, I reuse the entire frequency band. Reuse factor seven. Usually <coughs> goes along with a frequency reuse pattern that looks like this. Like so. There are seven cells in this pattern, and let's number them one, two, three. Now, um, in the specific example of GSM, let's actually first ask the question. Um, so we have a 25 megahertz uplink and downlink. How many channels, uh, how many FDMA channels are in that 25 megahertz? How would we find out? 25 divided by. Now I'm talking about the channels, just the GSM and FDMA channels. We divide by what? We take 25 megahertz, we divide it by 200 kilohertz per channel, and we get, we get 125 channels. But we mentioned last time, for technical reasons, one of those is excluded. 
So in fact, you have 124 channels. Okay. So in the 25 megahertz uplink and downlink, we have 124 uplink channels and 124 downlink channels. Okay. So what's the significance of this diagram? Well, basically, in if I um, in the cell number one, we should basically have one seventh of these channels. And similarly, if I take this diagram and repeat it, and so on. Any time uh, in, in, in such a hexagonal pattern that I repeat the cell number one, that, that, that cell would get the same, exactly the same channels. So how many of these channels would be allocated to each cell? Divided by seven. Divide by seven, that's right. So it turns out that doesn't exactly divide. 124 divided by seven is uh, roughly, it's somewhere between 17 and 18, it's almost 18. So we can say, uh, a GSM engineer would probably say, uh, let's allocate uh, 17 to some of these and 18 to others. Uh, actually, what I did not mention, some of these, uh, some of these channels are, are taken up for uh, for control purposes. So not all of them would be available for voice, but let's say for the sake of argument, they are all available for voice in this case. So um, let's say 124 divided by 7 is 17 point something. Let's just say 17. Uh, let's let's take the worst case and say 17 channels per cell. So how many calls per cell? 17 to 8. 17, pardon me? 17 times 8? Yeah, 17 times 8. So calls per cell, so 17 channels per cell times 8 calls per channel. And that is, uh, sometimes 8 is 56. 7 times 1, it's 136 calls per cell, calls per channel, per cell. So in other words, in GSM, um, each cell can support approximately 136 simultaneous calls. Now, of course, it can support many uh, simultaneous users. Uh, it's just that only 136 of them can make the call at any point. Okay, any questions on that? So you said it can support more than 136 users, but can make... So what I mean by that is 136, yeah, more than 136 users on standby. So for instance, uh, in this room, there are probably at least 20 cell phones, but nobody's making a call. And similarly, in this building, there are probably at least several hundred active cell phones, but not many of them are making calls. So. Uh, the assumption would be that at any given time, we can support 136 calls, but probably many thousands of, or probably about a thousand cell phones that are not making calls. Any other questions? Yes? The cell phones on standby, they're waiting on a certain frequency? Uh, yeah, so we did not talk about that, but... Because, um, yeah, we're just talking about the straight actual voice that's right. calls. Um, Yeah, so we're actually, in this case, we're actually talking about like the data, the use, the useful sort of rate paying data. Um, how much how much of that can we get? So what, um, if your cell phone is on and waiting for a call, it's, it's connected to, uh, it's connected to channels called the paging channel. And that paging channel will basically tell it you have a call and then it activates and chooses a, uh, chooses a time slot and away it goes like that. So yeah, there's there are there are specific mechanisms for dealing with that, but that's a that's a detail I didn't want to get into. Any other questions? Okay. Um, 